I'll be riding and racing on a new enduro bike this year and it's a pretty special one, but before I get into what makes it so unique, why don't we take a look at it first? This is my already out of production 2021 Polygon Vander N7. And I'm not exaggerating when I say the only reason why this bike exists is because of the pandemic caused bike shortage. Right now in the current climate, bike components are super hard to get a hold of. So if you're missing a certain fork, shock, or brake, you can't release a specific model of bike. So what exactly can be done about that? Well, when you're a company that is also the frame manufacturer like Polygon is, you can do something unique to fill the demand for new bikes. In this case, Polygon used open source frame plans to create a fresh run of bike frames and then fit those frames with parts on hand to make for a special one-off run of bikes to send to market. And I literally mean this bike is out of production already, since it was a special circumstance that they're not making more. What do you guys think of that? Is it cool that Polygon built the bike that could be sold right now to meet demand? Or are you bummed that you can't buy this enduro bike since it's already sold out? Let me know in the comments below. Going over the parts spec, you'll see that I did a few things to it out of the box to make it the burly bike I've been dreaming of. I wanted some reliable hubs with good engagement, so I decided on the durability and affordability of a set of Hope Pro 4 hubs with an HG free hub body. That was hard to say. I laced these with the WTB rims that came on the bike, my first time ever building a set of mountain bike wheels, so here's to hoping they hold up. And the brakes are a pretty interesting choice because they're actually SRAM's e-bike brake, the Guide RE. The cool thing about these brakes is the caliper is actually from SRAM's old line of code DH brakes. And up top it has a Guide R lever. So essentially it's a mixture of old DH and trail components. And now for the best part of this bike build, I've swapped over my Onyx SC1 fork from the N9 and reduced the travel down to 160 millimeters. And I'll be using a Jade coil out back for this season. After waiting for a month to ride this thing, trail conditions are finally great, so let's go see what it was like to break this thing in. All right, we're out at Beacon today. It has been a long time since I've regularly ridden. I've probably been on the bike two times since November, and it's March. So yeah, four or five months off. So not only am I getting used to a brand new bike, trying to get my bike legs back and uh, go through that little low confidence slump at the start of the season. So that's what today is about, feeling out this bike, getting my suspension dialed in because I've reduced the travel on the fork, so I don't know how it's gonna react at a 160 rather than 170. And yeah, just get used to everything again. It's been a while. I'm riding with my buddy Mark today and we're both feeling just as rusty from the off season. We're starting on a trail called Pop Rocks, which is pretty mellow, but has some decent chunky spots and ledges to jump off of to get a baseline suspension feel. All right, Pop Rocks warm up. It's always a fun run to warm up on. Now that my bike's not clunking, pretty, pretty nice. Wow. Not doing a lot of talking, just taking it in. It's confidence inspiring, that's for sure. All right. Dang, this bike is eating everything up. Kind of like having a little less travel, to be honest. Makes it feel more direct. All right, first little warm-up run. Yeah, bike feels great. It's uh, really planted, really fast. Super stable, wheels didn't explode. So I did a decent job there. Might need to bump the suspension up a 
little bit. Almost bottomed out. Top five, about five in, I guess. How's that like 92? Musty way uh, when I checked with my clothes all on, I was like 198. Yeah, I was just clothed up, not geared up. Then I took off my shoes and it was the same, so I was like, I don't know how much difference it makes. Unless you're packing like three liters of water in your backpack. Right. <laughs> GoPro and batteries. Body armor. Baggage, Body emotional armor. baggage. Yeah. I got about five pounds of emotional <laughs> baggage in this brain. A lot of the trails are still too muddy to ride, so options are limited. But we're hitting a trail next called Tire Trail, which has some higher speed turns, some jumps, and a big rock roll. All right. Do a little jumping on this trail. Whoa, <laughs> that was a funny noise. Yeah, oh, this bike is crazy fun. Holy crap. Popped way high off that. I like the shorter travel. I like it a lot. Last bike was 170, 160. This one's 160, 150. Feels more composed, not as wallowy. Yes. Oh God, that's new. I will say I've never had an easier time clearing that jump than on this thing. Which one? That little over the road downhill double. <laughs> I missed it again. I hate it. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, I need to get used to sitting on a saddle for so long. Maybe I should just have Sarah punch me in the sit bones over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this if you wanted to punch my sit bones. No? Okay. Never worked out with a buddy before I take it. <laughs> All right, another familiar trail, commitment issues. Let's see how this one's rolling. It's got some fun poppy stuff on it. Like that, boop. <laughs> oh, cool. Trying to find the bottom of the suspension, but I haven't yet. And yeah, we're gonna go around that. Meh. Where is this? Can't remember. Uh. Woo. It's a good run. Let's skip the rocks. Back end might be a little kicky. Lose some traction a little bit. Have to tune that out. Long skiddy. Not bad. Not used to having a louder hub though. <laughs> Eats everything. Hey, made it back. The Vander is fast, stable, but still changes lines with ease. It spews confidence to the rider, has great trail feedback, and wants to get airborne every chance it can. After my initial ride, I'm super excited to ride this bike all year. If you have any thoughts or questions on this limited run of enduro bikes, leave them in the comments below. 
If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, and if you want to see more bike related content, hit subscribe. Thanks for watching today, and until next time, keep that rubber side down.